slowly but surely, right-wingers are losing ground when it comes to climate change because thankfully most people acknowledge that having a habitable planet is kind of important. You know, maybe it's not the most important thing to people, but it's a little bit important if you want to survive and have an economy and have a future. Uh, but when it comes to public opinion polls, you know, there's a lot of room for opportunity for the right to propagandize their way back into dominance. So a morning consult poll conducted in August found that half of voters in the United States view climate change as a critical threat. Now, that's somewhat discouraging, considering that most people around the world are so concerned about climate change that they're willing to make changes to how they live and work in order to reduce the effects of climate change. But honestly, Half of the United States, only half viewing climate change as a critical threat, that's better than I'd expected, honestly, because think of all of the propaganda that's out there. And more and more young people are more concerned with climate change than, old, than older generations. So the question is, if more and more people are waking up to the reality that anthropogenic climate change is here and we need to do something about it, then how do right-wingers win this battle? How, how do they regain prominence and re-monopolize discourse surrounding this issue? Well, you tie it to culture war issues. You make it seem as if anyone who is concerned with climate change is just woke. And since critical race theory was so popular on the right and so effective, you come up with something new. Critical energy theory to further encapsulate how anyone who's concerned with climate change is woke. And on top of that, they're discriminating against fossil fuel companies if they want to penalize these companies for ruining the planet. So Kate Aronoff, in an article for The New Republic, details how Republicans are currently trying to create this brand new campaign against people who are concerned with climate change by using the critical race theory playbook. She writes, this morning at the ALEC committee meetings, Jason Isaac, director of the Koch-funded Texas Public Policy Foundation, wrote last Friday morning, you'll have the opportunity to push back against woke financial institutions that are colluding against American energy producers. The email obtained by the Center for Media and Democracy and first reported by CMD investigative journalist Alex Koch offers a window into a rapidly congealing strategy among Republican state-level officials declaring war on critical energy theory within the financial sector. The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, held its States and Nation Policy Summit in San Diego last week. The event, attended by a mix of state legislators and representatives from the private sector, featured spirited discussions about a potential constitutional convention, as well as lots of excitement about Virginia Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin's attempt to galvanize voters around critical race theory, the once obscure academic subfield that right-wingers now regularly rant about, claiming that CRT has infected the K-12 curriculum and that teaching students accurate facts about slavery and Segregation is somehow unfair to white people. Now, Alex seems gearing up for a similar move on energy policy. The group's Energy, Environment, and Agriculture Task Force, which met on Friday, voted to back two pieces of model legislation that portray climate policy, even climate policy that doesn't exist yet, as unfairly discriminating against fossil fuel companies. The resolution opposing Securities and Exchange Commission and White House mandates on climate-related financial matters encourages states to take up legal challenges against forthcoming rules from federal financial regulators around climate risk and disclosures, potentially aiming to trigger a similar wave of lawsuits from states that followed the Clean Power Plan during the Obama administration. The Energy Discrimination Elimination Act, voted through unanimously on Friday, directs states to compile a list of entities that are supposedly boycotting fossil fuel companies, explicitly citing banks that are increasingly denying financing to creditworthy fossil energy companies solely for the purpose of decarbonizing their lending portfolios and marketing their environmental credentials, institutional investors that are divesting from fossil energy companies and pressuring corporations to commit to the goal of the Paris Agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050, and large investments that are colluding to force energy companies to cannibalize their existing businesses. Like theory around critical race theory, though, the Republicans' war on critical energy theory doesn't necessarily need to be rooted in reality. It just needs to get people riled up. So because the anti-woke playbook has been so effective for right-wingers, they're going to use this against any reforms that they don't like. If we get a president who supports Medicare for all, they're going to claim that this is a woke policy. If we get a president who wants to increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour and they really want to lobby against it, they'll just say it's woke. They'll find some way to shoehorn in the culture war because that's what's really effective. That's what gets people to their side. And they're pretty brazen about that. 
Now, these model bills that they're proposing, they're actually similar to the anti-BDS bills, which have been very effective. So they're modeling these bills after anti-BDS bills. And on top of that, they're tying in critical race theory-esque language to attack it. Now, one of these types of laws already passed in Texas. And can you guess what one of the state lawmakers said in defense of this legislation? We have to pass this bill protecting fossil fuel companies because we need to stand up to wokeness. That's a direct quote that a lawmaker said about this legislation. They have the same playbook, and once they find something that works, they will never shut the fuck up about it. The only reason why they don't talk about cancel culture as much is because critical race theory is the new boogeyman that actually, for some reason gets people fired up. Again, it doesn't have to be factual, as Arnoff argued. It just has to get people angry. Now, they are preemptively trying to push this legislation to protect big banks, because if people want to take action, then really, ideally, you target these big banks that are funding fossil fuel investments. And it's not like there's much action against banks yet, but they're just preemptively trying to make sure that Action is not taken. So Arnoff continues, but contrary to right-wing rhetoric, claiming liberals have it in for Exxon investors, growing private sector buzz around greening the financial sector hasn't so far included much of a substantive challenge to banks or asset managers' continued investments in fossil fuels. In the five years since the Paris Agreement, the world's 60 biggest banks have showered fossil fuel projects with $3.8 trillion worth of financing, according to a report released this spring from the Rainforest Action Network and the Sierra Club, the well-publicized Global Financial Alliance for Net Zero, the allegedly 130 trillion strong effort launched by former Bank of England turned green central banking guru Mark Carney at the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow last month, included no stipulation that the asset managers involved, including BlackRock, the world's largest, would need to stop investing in coal, oil, or gas anytime soon. As of last year, BlackRock alone controlled 87 billion in shares of fossil fuel companies. So, yeah, listen, this is what we're going to hear more and more about. Uh, anything with regard to climate change is going to be, you know, tantamount to woke hysteria. So here's what I think we need to do to combat this. And it's not like we have this like cohesive machine where we uh, on the left disseminate these talking points that all of us recite. But here's how you compete uh, against this or, or combat this rather. You use their words against them. So what do you do? They're the ones who claim that these corporations have gone woke, right? So we use their own tactics against them. We claim, oh, you're defending these woke fossil fuel companies. That's pretty cringe. Companies like ExxonMobil are more woke than the radical left. Now, we don't have to like LARP as right-wingers to get the point across, but I mean, if we kind of like hit them with a really strong, no, you, you're the woke ones, then I think that that can be at least somewhat effective because for whatever reason, Americans, whenever they hear the words woke, whenever they hear critical race theory, their brains shut off. They immediately just think bad, that's bad. So, you know, if you're, if you're trying to convince an American that um, you should give them a thousand dollars, they most likely instinctively accept that. But the second you say, but if you accept this, you have to say critical race theory, good, immediately their brains would just shut off. There's like an alarm in their heads that like shuts down uh, any critical thinking or logic whenever critical race theory or woke or cancel culture comes up. So use it against them to the extent that we can. The problem is that even if we were, you know, as successful at messaging, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, big money has more of a spread. They're able to more easily get their message out. So even if we had the correct messaging, we'd still get drowned out by these fucking gigantic multi-billion dollar companies. So, I mean, just be prepared. Critical energy theory is going to be a thing and there'll mostly be other, I, I guess, branching off of critical race theory, critical healthcare theory. I mean, we're going to see it again because it's so effective until they find something else that's more effective. So be prepared. You've been warned. Don't be surprised when you hear Republicans talk about how people who care about the climate are woke.